Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. For this project, I'm going to make this segmented vase. Very small opening, light hollowed, but what is very unique about this one is that I did not do a detailed plan with the exact curve on this. Instead, I made a bunch of segmented discs, two or three different sizes, stacked them up, wondered what kind of form spoke to me out of there. Do forms speak to you out of wood? They do me. Anyway, had to add a couple more rings to, uh, to make it work, but then went ahead and turned this in a very rapid set fashion. I did not wait hours for rings to dry. So let's turn this nice vase. I made segmented rings of eight segments each. Seven rings at nearly the smallest without the points touching. Five slightly larger and two just a little bit larger. With these I hope to form a vase of some shape. At this plan they are fresh from glue up. The wood is a mix of hickory and pecan from a previous flooring project. Then sanded them to uniform thickness. They look a bit cleaner. After stacking them up to determine a good form, I decided I needed three more large rings to join into the fun. Then I stacked them up into an approximate shape. Looking at a classic shapes book, this looks like it could work. Then took off each ring, rounded it off, and drilled out the center to 3 8 inch for the smaller rings and 2 inch for the larger rings. Prepared a faceplate with a 3 8 inch T-nut embedded in it. I also have a length of all thread going through the T-nut. Excess rod is inside the spindle, and there is also a spacer on the outboard side of the spindle to center the rod. Now I am stacking the segment rings onto the threaded rod. The rings with the larger center holes have a 2 inch spacer disc to keep them centered. No glue here. Then add a washer and a nut to the top to cinch up my stack. A faceplate on the revolving live center will keep the rod centered. Now to form the external shape. Now I find out just how hard this hickory pecan is. It is hard and tough. Additionally, since the rings are not glued together, there is a risk of wood splitting off near the outside center of the segment so I need to be more gentle. There is some chipping, so I ease back a little more. Little by little, I work down the lower portion, the bump portion, and the top and neck. I am aiming for a smooth, flowing curve with a small bottom. I want to be fairly close to the final diameter. However, I recognize that there will need to be a refinement after it is all glued together with additional reduction in diameter. Now to start gluing the rings together. I am starting with the number 2 and number 3 rings. I do not have to wait long for the glue to fully dry before moving on to the next ring. After the glue grabs, I can safely move to gluing on the next ring. Now for the top segment rings. I did not wait quite long enough after the first two rings. When gluing on the third ring, the second ring came off. No problem. I added some more glue and glued both of them on. I'm giving that batch a break now since my shop is quite cold. I need to give it just a little more time for the glue to set. While they do, I can start on the midsection from the smallest to the largest. Each block is oriented so that I can easily hollow them after they are dry. Back to the top section. I'm 
back to the midsection. Now for the final ring from the top section. With multiple faceplates, I can get several batches going at once. Back to the midsection. I have the bottom ring ready now with plugs from both sides to fill the center hole. I can now glue the rest of the bottom section to the base ring. Now the final ring from the midsection. Each stack now has had several hours to dry in a warmer environment. I cannot trust glue to dry well in the cold shop. I now have the bottom section ready to hollow. To minimize stress on the fresh glue, I will drill out to the smallest target diameter, then expand with a box scraper. All pressure is back into the headstock. Even then, there are signs of semi-dry glue, but that is okay. Now for the midsection. Again, a box scraper will do the job since the walls are somewhat straight. I am not doing anything to the exterior at this point. The top section is another matter. The topmost segment ring is small diameter. It has had enough time to fully dry, but still I worry about it separating from the faceplate. So I'm using my DIY steady rest for lateral support and insurance. The box scraper does a lot of the heavy hollowing. I then switch to a round nose scraper for a more round inside curve that no one will ever see or any wood turner will ever feel with a finger. I'm about at max depth for this tool, but I do finish. Success! No unexpected launch this time. Now for the final glue up while the top section is still mounted. I'm gluing on the midsection. I need to get rid of the faceplate I used to glue up the midsection stack. I'm still worried about the small neck section, so I'm still using the steady rest. Once parted off, I can clean off the remaining faceplate wood and trim back the joint edge. Now to glue on the bottom section. I will now let the glue dry overnight inside the house where it is much warmer. The base is now dry and it is time to get rid of the top faceplate. Although the base is larger than the neck, I still worry about an unscheduled launch. Hence the steady rest again while I part off the faceplate. Now I can start cleaning up the exterior. I will work the neck first while the steady rest is still mounted. With the neck complete, I can bring up the, a cone center for support and remove the steady rest. Then work down the rest of the exterior. Although the top and bottom of the rings are well supported now that they are glued together, I will continue mostly with a shear cut to remove a minimum of wood. I had left the wall thickness at about a half an inch. That should be more than enough to prevent the inside from getting bigger than the outside. Following a thorough sanding, I can carefully part off the vase from the base faceplate. Easy does it. I am keeping my cut in the faceplate wood instead of the segment wood. I clean up the bottom with a sanding pad in the headstock. 
A bath in walnut oil brings out the grain. I took some risks with this vase, no detailed plan. I rushed the glue gl ring gluing and had small diameter rings at top and bottom. I had never turned unattached segment rings before. These risks paid off. Halloween was a breeze and the vase is beautiful. It has to be valuable since it is decorative. The small base precludes very much utility at all. I like it and will probably use these techniques on more projects. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new woodturning video and add it to my website. As usual, I appeal for you to wear your full face shield for safety anytime the lathe is running. I will see you next week with another wood turning video. Be wise in these COVID times. Do not think about your problems. Instead, count your blessings and try to stay healthy.